So the Night Cage, this is from Smirk and Dagger. It's a one to five player game. It says it's four ages 14 and up. It plays in about 50 minutes. Even when we played online, that was really accurate timing. Um, and so once I get this open and uh, kind of review all the rules, I probably will be streaming it in the, one of the next few weeks as a solo game to really show it off um, and make use of the October Halloween time period. Um, I also did receive this little mini package, uh, um, maybe a little mini expansion, so I will open that in a little bit. I'm going to set it off to the side. So let's see what's on top. So as we would expect, a nice rule book right on top. Let's go through that and kind of see how it lays out the rules. Uh, it does have, uh, for Diced, interactive game tutorial, if you want to learn how to play. Uh, there's apparently a code inside the box, um, so you can learn as you play. Uh, and then that looks like that's on the Google Play and regular app store as well. And so it looks like it starts with an overview, which is nice, kind of gives you the story of what this game is about and kind of the theming uh, it kind of lets you know it's a co-op game tile placement game and it gives you the objectives right up front which is always great to know okay this is how we win this is how we lose uh, before you even start learning how to play uh, in case you get too deep and be like wait why are we doing this now you have a reason for you have that objective to what you're doing uh, contents Always great to find the contents listed in a rule book, of course, so you can verify that you're never missing anything in case something falls on the floor between game nights and such. And then it goes through setup, which combined with contents, this uh, that always makes setup easier because then you can reference uh, the name of all the components. It gives you instructions how to assemble the tile holder, which we'll probably do in a minute after we pull everything and punch everything. Continues with setup, uh, a good pictorial view of what the board and everything setup would look like on your table. Uh, very easy to read. It looks like uh, they've broken it up into smaller paragraphs um, with bullet points or number systems. So it's easy to find different things, it looks like. And then it goes through explaining how the board works and what you can see, uh, even some quick FAQ on um, starting positions and then what the different stuff looks like um, because this game is basically you're you're kind of in the dark you're holding a candle moving around so your candle only lights a path so far into the darkness um, and so depending on the type of uh, path tile laid you you may not actually cast light in certain directions but and also as you move away from certain path locations uh, certain path tiles will be thrown back into darkness and so they get removed from the board which was a really interesting mechanic for this so you may think you've set a path to a location but you move too far away that path may no longer technically exist uh, to get back so then it goes through playing the game what happens if you stay if you move or how to move uh, what happens with those tiles um, if they crumble turn into pits uh, and it talks about how the board actually wraps around itself. Um, you're searching for keys uh, to get through the gates. Uh, there's monsters in this as well. Uh, they call them wax eaters. Kind of walks you through how those work. Uh, penalties and such. Uh, nerve. Uh, which is basically kind of like little bonus tokens you can use to spend to do additional actions. It looks like uh, the final flickers, um, kind of how your candle can actually burn out. One of the ways that game can end. Uh, then once you get used to the game, get good at it, there's advanced game rules as well. So it allows you for even more plays, playthroughs than, than oh, we got good at the game. And which is always nice to have multiple um, difficulty levels to play a game at. 
no, of course we got uh, credits. And then it looks like a quick reference on the back of the rule book as well. Let's move the box top out of the way so we have room to set things out. Okay, nice. It does come with several baggies. Um, it's always nice to have extra Ziplocs to put components in. So if you've been here before with me, you know how I like a good storage option, be it an insert or Ziplocs. So things don't move around, uh, fall around too much. Looks like uh, because the box did say this was the the wrapping said something about this being like the all-in version. Uh, so probably like the Kickstarter version. It actually. So I don't know if the base game later a retail version of this will come with this, but. Uh, so you can add to the ambience. Um, you have these little LED plastic candles you can use. And they come already ready to turn on, which is fun. Uh, it comes with five of those, of course, because it plays up to five players. Um, so, like on the top of this Rule book and talk about that dies code. Uh, it looks like it has a little scratch off thing uh, to get that code. Then we got our player pieces, which kind of look like different heights of candles. Um, so that, that's nice that they've done different heights on them and different colors. Um, so for anyone that has potential colorblind issues, you can tell by the different uh, shape of the player piece that you use on the board. I'll throw those over here for now. Those are all wooden components right there. Okay, and then in this zip block, it appears we have some of those extra tokens and the tile tower. I'm going to take a quick look at that. These are, ooh, that's a, pla like a plastic resin. Um, that's been cut out. That is not cardboard or wood. So I'm assuming because of the melt on that. So it looks like there is a film to peel off of the face of that as well. So it's protected in the box, which was nice. I will peel that later before I assemble them. And then we got some more components here. This is, is that the first player token? It might be. But even these other components right here that we talked about, let me verify what the name of those were. Uh, let's see. So this right here is considered the fourth prisoner marker. Put that in view over there for a little bit. And then all of these were the no nerve tokens. Now I do wonder, I'll have to get a count on these. It's looking like it may be a few short of the 14, but it's possible that there are cardboard ones as well. But all of these are also that resin with a film to peel off. Okay, and then this also has some nice metal key uh, that you're searching for. There's actually f uh, five of these, enough for each player to find one. Uh, if you look close at the detail, it looks basically like a little skull on the top of the key, almost like bone. Uh, for the different teeth of the key. Almost like it's um, the skeleton uh, and the backbone with the ribbing coming off parts of that backbone. Which is a, a, a kind of a cool effect you don't see very often. Okay, and then we have a board to place tiles on uh, for discarding. So it has, kind of shows the different types of tiles you might see and need to discard that is double-sided. 
it looks like, depending on the number of prisoners, um, players you have, uh, depends on which side of this you use. Okay, and then we have uh, player cards. So we have the five different ones uh, for the five different colors. Um, green, yellow, red, blue, and purple. These are reference cards to kind of remind you what you can do on your turn. And then if you were lights out, say your candle got snuffed, um, it kind of, you turn it over to recognize what you can still do. So of course those colors uh, correspond to the five colors of player tokens we've already pulled out. And now we have some punch boards and a regular board. I guess before we go too far, we do have the inside of the box, which is really cool artwork. Uh, it's always nice when a publisher and uh, does enough to get artwork inside the box as well and not just on the outside. It really ties the whole thing together, especially the theming of this kind of you're, you're trapped in a cave in a, in, in a pit. And the way they've done this, it kind of makes it look like a character's in the bottom of the pit being in the bottom of the box. So really cool effect that they did with that. So I like that. Let's uh, open up this board now. Okay. So let's see if I can fit it all on screen. I may have to move the box to get this lower. See if that works. Well, I can fit most of it, at least for now. Um, so cool. So we have the name of the game on the board. Uh, more because they have a little bit of extra space to do that. And then in the corners, you kind of have a reference to directions. Um, so over here, let's actually turn this around because that's the way it's labeled. So here it talked about this is the side of the board for it being one to four players. This is the north side of the board. This bottom corner has an S for south uh, pointed down. And then you have places for keys in the corner as well as nerve tokens in this other corner so i'm assuming the other side of the board means it's for five players uh, yep and so it says it's five players right up here in this corner uh, again we have the north the south um, keys and nerve spaces now let's see did that change the number of, t of spaces in the middle we got what four seven by seven the other side was a six by six so yes it does add additional spaces into the map uh, that you're exploring and moving about depending on if you're playing five players or one through four so that is our board quad fold uh, to fit into the box okay yeah so it does look like um, because this was an all-in Kickstarter type version that these resin pieces are additional and kind of upgraded style components because in this box as part of the punch boards we have a cardboard tile tower that we'll be punching out. So we're going to start punching things out and for everyone who's been here before and knows what I like to do. I like to kind of turn off the music for a moment and we're going to do almost ASMR in that we listen to how well these components punch out of the board because what I've learned is uh, you can kind of hear how good the component is and how it pops out of the board. Uh, this cardboard is about two, probably two millimeters thick. It's not super thick. Um, we've pulled thicker cardboard games out before we've also de dealt with thinner but it's not always about how thick it is it's about how well it's been glued together and like that so we're going to try punching this out and listening to it now I do pardon me um, I have neighbors and of course they are welcome to make noise and live their life so that I happen to be in the hall at the moment. So I'm going to give them a moment to uh, 
walk upstairs and then from the, then I'll punch when it's a little bit quieter. Um, but there's nothing wrong with having neighbors. Um, it's good to know that they're they're happy and that they're getting home on a Friday night to have some fun. It sounds like. Okay, now that's gotten a bit quieter. I can try punching these out for real. So that was a very clean sounding punch. Um, no tabs were caught on it because this is the tower. Um, there's some skinnier slits to punch pieces out of. Those seem to come out quite smoothly. So you can hear that they did use quite thin tabs. Uh, you can barely make them out once it's been punched, which is always nice that it didn't hold on too tight. And of course, it's going to have these small tabs that I'll have to try to pull out. These are always the hardest to get out without breaking it. But having small pieces like this, and they put extra design work into having a tower you can use, which is always nice. So I won't complain about having a few uh, skinny slits to punch out. Because the trick is just using the back of a knife, pushing it, typically works quite well, which it seemed to right there. I'm going to try to get this tower assembled real quick so we can show off the tower here during the unboxing. Hopefully. And then the resin one I will actually uh, peel apart and assemble later. But I do want to show off the cardboard one as this is considered the standard edition that uh, will be likely found in all versions of the game. Okay, so this has two sides to it, and they've made the artwork different on both sides, which is kind of cool to see. Um, it does make it look almost like the outside of the candle, and then the inside of the candle once it's melted down. So that's a good indication that's likely the inside of the tower, as it is of these pieces uh, turned in that direction. Okay, let's see if I can do this the right order. Does it look like you have to get the bottom one in an angle, then the rest, and then slide it down? It seemed to work quite well. There we go. And then the, the candle base will slide in at an angle. Make sure I'm aligning it correctly. Where am I catching? There we go. Nice and snug fit for the bottom. Right there. there we go. Okay, so as you can see right now from top down view, uh, there's artwork both inside and out, and then from this view, or if, you're, or if you're looking at me, you can see how it stands up. This base right here is actually angled slightly up. So when tiles are sitting on it, they actually lean back towards the back of this whole tower, which is a really good good design choice. Okay, so we'll start popping some of the other things. So this does show that uh, there is the 14 nerve tokens as indicated in the rule book. So I'm not worried about that the resin ones was not the same count because there may not be a need to use all 14 at one time. So as you can see, these are popping very nicely. Uh, not, not too much pressure, uh, none of them hanging, uh, risking tearing. 
So I, I do like the quality of this cardboard uh, and print on it so far. And then it looks like this tile was one of those advanced uh, pieces to put on the board if, you're, if once you've learned how to play. Uh, it looks like a really giant pit. And then, I'm not sure which direction this gets turned. Either pits or that may be one of the, the monsters to be advanced. So now we got um, some of these actual uh, tiles that go on the board indicating either monsters or keys of different sorts. So we'll start punching those. How well these are punching, I think I have time to uh, get them all punched very easily right now. We're not going to be struggling and taking our have to take too much time to do it. Yeah, they're, they're all, I wouldn't say falling out. Um, I've, I've had some games where these, these types of pieces just completely fall out before you even touch them. But this is a, a good balance of how tight they fit to hold them in, but loose enough and cut through to not tear. And as you can see, all these different tiles, different paths, uh, some are T's, um, some are circles, some are just corners in different ways. Some have a full uh, pit monster type look, uh, pits, and then you turn it over, there's the monster in the pit. Um, so more, more with keys. What I can do once I get all these punched, I can actually show you how they fit into the tower as well. So here's more of the standard paths. Um, we got full crosses, uh, more of the T's, and then some of these spaces um, crumble. So after you essentially pass over them, they they fall and become pits. And then those pits can end up uh, being a detriment to your movement. Uh, be it uh, with monsters or just in general because you can't walk through them. So now I can show you how, how these actually fit into this tower real quick because that's always cool to see uh, how towers and other things that you build are, uh, get implemented. As you can see, they, they fit right in there quite easily and then stack up. Now, if you want to learn more about how this game plays, you can also go check out um, the Charity Board Gamer on YouTube. Uh, he has uploaded a video on there where I was able to interview Kurt from uh, Smirk and Dagger where we learned more about this game, talked through kind of how it works in general, showing off some of these components as well while we're at Origins Game Fair because me, Chris, and then Chelsea from uh, Chelka's Corner uh, go uh, work together as a media team going to some events now. Now granted, some of these tiles during the game probably are not all put into the tower, um, I'm just wanted to show you how it could look uh, when it looks starts to look full. So as you can see here, it fits quite well. Um, from this view, you can probably see that they stack up, and then as you draw them, it, it's actually mimicking your candle uh, burning out. Um, so if you run out of these tiles, it can end the game as well. So you can see how they all fit into here quite well. Okay. So let's move on and look, see what else we have to look at. So we've looked at this board, which talks about some of those different tiles we, uh, that get set on it. And then we have this extra little pack of cards, a uh, little mini expansion. So let's see what's in this. So let's see what it says. This is the Endbringer, a boss monster. So during setup, you could shuffle five Omen tiles into the draw stack. Omens act as a countdown clock. And so it, it's essentially another way to play the game. Um, additional, and then these right here get punched out. 
and now this is a little bit tighter but just because of the general shape of it uh, it's not a perfect square or circle that punches out easily which we can be a little bit more gentle with this one uh, not no problem with that at least it doesn't look like based on the way this is cut this is one that you would set up like so uh, kind of showing off all those legs and it kind of crawl across the board towards you and I do apologize my table's a little lumpy because I have stuff under the mat right now that's why things are rocking it's not the game components that are uh, cut wrong it is my game mat so I will try to get something flat and smooth to set this on real quick to show you yeah so you can see it's quite uh, smooth and once it's assembled and that can go there so now let's try to use all of these ziplocs that it provided to put this stuff away and we will do what uh, many of you know that I like to do a bit of a shake test this is I do a shake test to kind of indicate how well uh, a box can be organized and then if it would uh, kind of fall out uh, or mix in a way that is uh, not not helpful or useful or, or something you want to see. We've had some games that come with no storage options, so everything mixes up, decks of cards mix up. But because of the Ziplocs provided with this, I think we'll be okay. Um, I'm going to throw all the tiles into this larger Ziploc that was provided. Oh, don't forget that stack. Now, it may be that the intent was uh, certain types of tiles going to certain size Ziplocs. But I'm going to attempt to test all the tiles in that one bag should fit. Now, all of these cards had their sleeve, which we'll, I will put back in. It's nice that this had one of those resealable envelope style sleeves. So I'm gonna put that in under the flat stuff so it doesn't catch on anything, hopefully. And then we have the bag that all of these resin pieces came in. So all of that resin is going to go back into its bag. Now it does appear that there is enough space right now for uh, both the cardboard tower and the resin tower to both be assembled and sit in this box. I would not have to uh, fully disassemble one or the other to still use them, which is very nice to see. Uh, let's see, of course, that's going to go back in there. Uh, what did I do with... Okay, this the sleeve that this expansion thing came through. Now, you may not have to take this apart every time, but I'm going to put it back uh, for now as a reminder for when I do play that that's expansion. Uh, and then we have our coins, which... Okay, there's the little bag for it. Or not... Sorry, not coins. Keys. I'm not sure why I said coins a while ago. They had their own little bag, which is nice. And then all these uh, tokens right here, I can put in this last bag. So it does appear that the number of bags is a good count, uh, easily uh, keeping things separate and organized based on what you would need for setup, quickly finding particular items. Now this is looks like a resealable thing that all these candles came in. Again, these candles may be part of the all-in Kickstarter version. I am unsure if they will be part of the uh, standard retail version at a later time. Uh, so I don't forget to mention that this game actually does have a soundtrack that they uh, released that you can listen along to as you play. So that, that can be a fun experience to make a kind of a, a nice spooky night out of it. Is what I would recommend. Turn down the lights, maybe light some actual candles or just have some low lighting. Okay. 
So then we have our box top back on. And we're going to do our shake test. And the shake test is we literally shake it. We try to somewhat mimic a standard usage. Because uh, it might get thrown into the trunk of your car if you're going to game night. Uh, you may put it on end on your shelf. Uh, maybe you accidentally rotate it around. Okay. So our first uh, indication is, see how the box is wanting to come open. Keep that in mind in the way that you store it, carry it, move it around. Um, it may be one of those games, but it's better flat on your shelf than on its side, as because of the way the components are, they might start to force the box open. That's something to keep in mind. Completely up to you though, of course. Um, maybe you're someone who likes to use box bands, uh, basically the big rubber bands that hold the box completely tight but this box lid is a little bit looser than some other lids we've seen. As you can see, it's um, essentially falling down by its, on, its, on its own, not needing any kind of pressure. So that alone says it's a looser fit. Um, so you, you will have a small likelihood of the lid coming off, sitting on its side too often. But in general, we have the components did seem to uh, survive no major issues because of all of the different bags that were provided. So I do appreciate uh, how that was set up uh, with the extra bags. So that is the Night Cage from Smirk and Dagger. One to five players, ages 14 and up, that plays in about 50 minutes. 